thank you for joining me today we're going to talk about partner communities so if you're not familiar with what partner community is it's um it's one type of community uh, the other one is customer community so the partner community is used for partners and partners could be anyone depending on the business or industry you are in who who you do business with and who are also equally important in bringing revenue to your company for example if you are a manufacturer of a product partners could be someone who you sell your products at a wholesale price and then they sell it to end users directly that could be one scenario but there are multiple scenarios and it really depends on your business and your use case but uh, today we're going to look at from the perspective of how to build that from salesforce so um and partner community do require licenses they are not free so um and the developer org if you're trying to practice this you will have one partner community license available for you so come on to setup and type community and you should land on this all community setup page so communities and all communities and this is where it will take you just to show you we're going to use partner central so click on new community and you'll see all these different options here i'm going to pick partner central and that's really recommended one for partner community obviously if your requirements are pretty custom then you might also choose your own custom template and it varies based on industry as well um, but for this video i'm right, picking this partner central it gets started and this is where you'll name your community maybe it's a reseller community or the wholesale whatever it might be name it uh, appropriately and then hit create once you hit create it should bring you back to um builder uh, something like this so I, I already have one created and it will bring you to this is called the community builder or also sometimes experience builder um, and this is really how, where you'll be customizing the look and feel of the community so it's a it's a you can you have a publish and preview option you can preview it this is exactly what your end users will see um, so let's look at how to customize some of the aspects of it so when you like hover over any of these you will notice that they are just some rich can content editor so you can directly edit right here you can make it blue if you want font you can change the font size here um, you can add pictures if you like so it's really anything you can do on any other general website builder like Wix or WordPress it's similar uh, kind of experience you can add an image here uh, change the image based on your company and all these things are coming from the components here so if I start typing I can type rich content editor that's where that's what that so I can drag and drop anywhere I like if I want to add one more here I can add one more and I can say test something so that's how easy it is to drag and drop the components from on the left side to the in the main canvas these are the different other components and you can embed flows if you are trying to gather some information from the partners and everything else that you can do in other Salesforce instances, you can embed reports and dashboards as well. And in fact, this is one of the report dashboards that is embedded here. Okay, so just to show you navigation menu, if I want to change those navigation, maybe I don't care about resources, I can remove that. And I might want to add something else in the menu. I can say, I want to add account or contact, whatever that might be. And in the type, you can actually pick if there's external URL you want to add um, from directly from the community global action menus. And just like standard menu, you can say, oh, sales is a menu, and then you can add sub menus to it. Uh, I'm just going to pick Salesforce object, and you can say contact. And default list views or any list views you can pick from there. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. And obviously the partner profile need access to those objects if you're linking it to a Salesforce object. Okay, uh, another thing I also want to point out is after I go to preview, I'm going to go to deals, which is the opportunity list view and click on an opportunity. So um, if I want to edit this, so out by default, the page will look something like this. If I want to show you and that is some edits that I made. So 
this is how the page will look like. That's called record detail, which is more generic version. But I created an opportunity page. So the way you will create any page, so let's say if you want to change this look and feel, I recommend creating your own page and change that as needed. So if I go to a leads, so for example, go to a lead and I want to maybe add a lead page. So this is out of the box vanilla page. I want to add a status there um, or packed. So you can directly create pages from here, call a new page, say object pages and select an object. I already have an opportunity one, so I'm just gonna add a lead page. Hit create, create. And now the page that I will see will be very similar to the app builder experience. And I can just drag and drop things from the left hand side to the right hand side and add them. So I have this record banner, record detail, information tabs. If I click on that, I will see that all these different tabs are named here. I can change them if I like to. So very similar experience. And components, this lightning symbol is where I can find all the components that I need. If I want to add paths, I can add the paths. I'm not sure if I have a path for lead, but there you go. So I have a path for lead. And this is basically dependent on the record type that you have for the lead. It will pick that record type path. So we, we look at that. Um, on this top section, you will see other pages as well, like you'll see login page. So any page that you see, you can customize here. So let's say if I if I want to come here and for some reason I don't I want to remove something from here or change the wording for that, I can customize there. So all the pages are customized from this top gear section. Um, another thing that's easy to miss is also this page actions. So all the pages have that little three drop dots, and you can click on page settings. It will show you all the different variations. Right now, I only have one variation, and you might need variations sometimes because let's say one partner for one partner you want to show something for the different partners. There are a lot of complicated situations where you want to show different variation of the pages. So you can do that here, and you can also control the visibility, which will look in a different video, but you can show or hide control visibility on different pages. Um, for opportunity. This was the page I created. So you can move the pages around. Uh, I really haven't used that one, but basically this is where it was easy to miss for me when I started uh, using this builder. Um, another important, um, actually, this is a fun one, where's theme. You can change the theme from here. You can also embed your own images. So let's say if you have a company logo uh, and you want your color and theme to look like the company logo, you can upload that image directly here. Let me use Winter 2021. And it will change the background. You can also add background images. So I'm gonna add the same one. And so there you go, we have nice background and on the theme, you can also use color palettes. So if I want to change the color, generate palette from image. So I can also generate a palette from the image. So let's say if your company likes red and blue and you want to generate your community theme accordingly, you can do that as well. Um, and the fonts is pretty standard, you can change the fonts. So that's the theme, that's like a painting brush. Page structure is an interesting one. So let's say if I go back to the account page or that's the my account from the login section. But let's go to a somewhat easier page. We just create a lead, go to lead page. So based on which page you are in, the page structure might change depending. So in this page, we have page header top, header, we have a global search box. So these things that you're seeing on the template header, template header bottom, content. So all these different content footer, con template footer, this is all coming from the page structure. So when you're creating custom components uh, in Lightning community, that's the difference. You will have to create a custom structure as well. So you can even create your own custom structures if you like. So that's 
uh, if I go to a login page, I will see some, I will see a different structure. So if I go to login page and I click on page structure, the structure is changed. We only have header, content, and footer. So this is where that comes in, and I can remove things from here if I like. Let's say I'm removing social login. Don't need that, so that's gone. Um, and most importantly, we have settings. So settings is where um, general is pretty standard. Um, it, it will tell you if the community is active or not, or published or not. So you have to publish the first time you create a community. Um, it will tell you what theme it is. More importantly, the security. Sometimes uh, if you're trying to add a chat bot or something there, you might need to configure the CSP settings here. So that's one of the places I come to uh, to do some uh, troubleshooting. More often, also you spend time on this administration. So click on this little bar, it will show you builder, and then there's another option called administration. So if you go to administration, this is where you will tell the system who has access to this community. First of all, there's a status, so active or inactive. Um, next thing is members. So it, since it is partner community, obviously you want your partner profiles to have access to the partner community. So uh, rather than using the standard partner profile, it's always a good idea to clone that standard partner community user and create your own profile so you have more flexibility to edit that. So I created a trailblazer partner, which was a clone of partner community users, so gave them access. You can use permission sets, roles. Um, I just left to default for this video. Um, login and registration. This is where you can choose different custom options as well. So if you have a Visual Force page, um, which is really customized, you can use that here. Um, I select, by default, it would be the default page. I use the Experience Builder page, which is the login page we just looked at. And that's pretty much most of the time that configuring and troubleshooting that we'll spend. Um, OK, so once we have the community, don't forget to publish. Don't forget to activate it the first time. And then anytime you make changes, you will need to publish it. Uh, or another, another feature is also, if I go back to the builder, is if you make a change and if you feel like you don't want it or you don't like that change, you can always hit this undo button. It's really helpful as well. So if you're making a lot of changes here, you can do undo. OK, um, I think that's all for the customization of this. Now let's look at the, on the Salesforce side. Um, what do you need to do to enable people or accounts to start accessing their communities? So um, number one is make sure on the account page layout, you have the enable enable partner user button. So that's just a button from the page layout setting. You can go to page layout and add that button called enable as partner. Um, and that's one part of it. Another part is then you have to go to contacts. These are the contacts that will be able to access that community. So let's just see Sean Forbes. I want Sean Forbes to access the community. Then I'll need to enable customer user. Oh, I'm sorry, enable partner user which I don't see it here, uh, but you need to add that button. Um, let's go to a different contact for that. So if I go to this Dickinson class place, uh, go to the contact. This is where I enable this contact already. You can see view. Once you enable it, you'll see view partner user or you can disable partner user. So these are two options and you can also log in to the community as the user for exactly from here. So login as is also different for community, okay? Um, if you're trying to enable the partner user for the first time, things to note is that the account owner needs to have a role. So if, if the account is owned by me, my user profile, my user needs to have a role. And if it is empty, I'll get an error. So that's one point. And obviously you need to have a license and then assign it to the profile. Let me just show you how the, user looks like. So I'm clicking on view partner user. We're going back, going to that. It's a simple user record like Salesforce standard, but the only difference here will be the profile is trailblazer partner and user license is partner community and the role. So the role is auto created by Salesforce. So since this person belongs to Dickinson place, 
uh, that's the role got created by default. That two other types, partner manager can be another role as well. But for this one, we have only have partner user. So, and the contact is Andy Young because that was the contact we convert the user or the partner user. Okay. So now let's look at how it looks like from the partner side. So we are here, um, our nice customized login page. I have that website's uh, user saved. The first time when they log in, they will get a, first time when you enable them, they'll get an email. Uh, but this is how it looks like. So just like how we saw in the preview, it's very similar, no changes there. Go to deals, you see all the opportunities. Um, and in the next video, now we can see this partner is seeing all the opportunities, all the accounts, which is really a terrible idea in terms of security. So next video, we'll see how to fix that and how to share records uh, from the community perspective because it is somewhat different than the usual, usual Salesforce security setup. So we'll take a look at that. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions so far.